episode and kick back, relax, live free, true young nomad style because on this episode, as promised, we've got a few short, sharp and shiny days to finish off Exmouth and in particular, as you can see behind us, we're in Cape Range on that side of the Exmouth Gulf and we're gonna take you with us starting off at probably, well, we're raising the bar, we're starting the bar incredibly high. We're at the world famous and absolute incredibly well-known oyster stacks then we're going to take you through to turquoise bay so on this episode there's going to be a lot of sand sun h2o snorkeling marine life all the beautiful majestic stuff that the ningaloo reef behind me the world heritage has to offer if you've got any questions about this episode or previous episodes drop them in the comments below we'd always love to hear from you and stay tuned because at the end of this episode i'm going to share with you a hot little accommodation tip in Exmouth because it's Bloody hard to get accommodation next mouth. So if you sit tight and wait to the end, enjoy the snorkeling because we're about to jump in the water, I'm gonna share with you a little accommodation tip right at the end of this EP. But whatever you do, legends, live free, kick back, let's get in the water. Yo! All right, here we go, legends, oyster stacks. Let's jump in. Hope you enjoy this dive with us. The girls are already in as well. Let's check out underwater. Legends, that wraps up Oyster Stacks. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Water clarity was pretty good. It's a bit windy today, but at least it's sunny and clear. And uh, here's a hot little tip. If you ever come down to the Oyster Stacks, try and get it on a incoming or high tide. Just you've seen how deep it was, and we're about an hour on the outgoing tide during this little snorkel. So yeah, hot little tip if you're ever down this way, as you can see, it's pretty shallow. Try and get it on a full tide or at least as high as possible. Anyway, now we're going to drive down to Turquoise Bay, jump in the water again and take you for a little snorkel and swim through Turquoise Bay. I'm not too sure if you can see, but just out the back there that we've literally seen probably 100 meters off the back of the reef, whales breaching at about 12 o'clock. Let's just give it a second here and see if you can see a whale breach as well. There's whales galore at the moment at this time of year. Um, we've literally just hit the beginning of August, which is peak season for whale time. And all we needed to do is to rock up, but as always, when it's cameras out, it's camera shy, I'm sure. No, anyway, we'll head on over to Turquoise Bay and we'll show you that little gem of a spot now. Let's do it. Told you a little fib. We've done a detour and we've gone north before going to Turquoise Bay. 
Uh, we're here at Osprey Bay. We thought while we're here, we'll stop in here and check it out. And the word of Osprey Bay is that there's a fair number of turtles out there at the moment. So we couldn't pass up the opportunity. We're gonna uh, put the snorkel gear back on, head out there, and hopefully share with you some cool turtles. I love swimming with turtles. They're so cool, placid, chilled creatures. And I uh, just love watching them in their natural flight. But uh, if you're ever down and you come to stay at Osprey Bay here, for you fellow fisher, fishers that are watching, there's this cool boat launch here as well. So you can get a little boat down here onto the beach. It's a bit soft up there, but down here, not too bad. Uh, you're probably a tinny, four, four and a half meter at most, probably all you get down here. But have a look at this. You can motor out through here, get out wide, out on the outer reef, or you can do what we're gonna do and we're gonna go for a snorkel around that bommy out there. Anyway, let's suit up, let's get yous out there. <laughs> How good was that? Ew. Mama's happy. Mama's happy. Turtles. How do you do turtle sign language? <laughs> Ew. All right, folks, so that was Osprey Bay. Hopefully you got to see a couple of those little ninja turtles just hanging in there under the reef and uh, under the ledges there. That was super awesome, just seeing them parked up and resting up there. So now, as promised, we're at Turquoise Bay. So as you can see, this place seems to be a bit more popular, a lot more people here, which is not always what I like, but uh, check it out for yourself anyway. Not a far walk, just come from the car park down there, legends. And yeah, what you're meant to do is snorkel from one point to the next, but the current's coming now this way. So um, we'll head out this way and snorkel out that way kind of thing. So kick back, enjoy, put your wetty on, rashy, whatever suits, snorkels. Let's jump in there together, Turquoise Bay. So that was Turquoise Bay. What do you think, love? I think it's nice. Yeah, it's um, a bit murkier here, we noticed, but the tide 
is pushing a bit more at the moment, so that could be affecting the water clarity. Um, but here, a bit more structure. Yeah, way more structure. <clears throat> a lot of reef here. Um, bombies. Yeah, if it's clear, this would be an awesome spot. But yeah, just that water clarity wasn't as good. But I don't know. What was your favourite out of three? Out of uh, Oyster Stacks, Osprey Bay, or Turquoise Bay? Probably Oyster Stacks. Oh. I reckon I like each one of them for different things. Yeah. Like, Oyster Stacks was nice for like all the fish and stuff. Yeah. Then you had Osprey where all the turtles were. Yeah. And here, like you've got more structure and there's different, there's bigger fish, like big, big fish. And there's so many more spots we haven't shown you because it's, there's only so much time you got, but uh, there's South Mandu, North Mandu. Um, so if we get some time tomorrow, we'll come back in here and do a couple of those spots. Cause tomorrow we're planning to take you from the water, beautiful ocean, Ningaloo Reef to mm. up there into the ranges for a bit of hiking. And what's the name of the trail we're looking at doing? Mandu Mandu. Mandu Mandu Trail. There's possibly. another one called Yardi Creek as well. Yeah, we're Yardy gonna look Creek at Creek Trail or something. So we'll look at those two tonight. We'll make a call which one we're gonna do tomorrow because we haven't done a hike for a while. So we're really looking forward to getting up, doing a bit of hiking, getting up high, having a bit of a scenic look. And if we get some time after we've done the hike, we might even come back to South or North Mandu for a little bit of a dip if yeah. we get time there. But you surprised me because um, I thought you were going to say Osprey Bay, which was my favourite. I just love the fact the swim out there is real cool. It's deeper water, obviously, but it's sandy. And I love that water, just diving down to the bottom into beautiful pristine white sand and the water's, you know, two metres, three metres deep. Mm. And then getting out there to the reef and the structure. But the turtles are so cool. Yeah, they're really cool. They're just we real chilled. Turtles. They're just so placid. Like, mm -hmm. I, I hope you could see them in the footage before, which I'm sure you can, how they're just nestled up there under the reef and the rock, just sort just of chill. looking at you. And We've they're just relaxing. They're like actually swimming and they're just like dawdling along, mm. just doing their thing. Yeah. Yeah, real cool. But this is a cool spot. I'll again spin the camera around. If you want to come down here for a family day, family afternoon, you know, bring down your little beach hut or whatever, have a little afternoon lunch or you know, um, snack or whatever, spend a few hours down here with the kids. It's a cool little protected bay. Check it out. So you got that point there, North Point and South Point. So when the tide's coming in, the real aim is to go from this point over to that point. But the tide's going out, which is going now north to south. So uh, you can't really walk around to that point unless you want to walk across all the rocks there. So we started off just out here north a little bit and then use the current to drift off south down here with it as well. Just make it nice and relaxing so you don't have to pedal too hard. Anyway, we're gonna head home. That's it for the Savo. Yeah. Stay tuned though, that little accommodation tip I'm gonna share with you once we drive and uh, get back to base. I'll share it with you folks. Nothing too whiz bang, but just a cool little thing that we found out that we Does thought would share with you. So that might just give you an extra three nights if needed, if you're in this region, because it is super busy. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's hit the tarmac. We'll see you back at home. G'day legends, welcome back. So as promised, I'm gonna share with you our little accommodation off-grid campsite here just outside of Exmouth. Now, some of you may already be aware of this, but for those that maybe haven't traveled to Exmouth, this might be a helpful little hint and tip for you because we found out about this spot after being here for quite some time and talking to people. So that's what this channel's about, is sharing our experiences and knowledge with you to hopefully improve any trips that you're preparing and planning for. Um, so this little, little camp spot is actually put on by the Shire of Exmouth. Um, it's a maximum of three nights stay, okay? So uh, pretty much what you need to do is you need to go to the information center. There's a little center booth there uh, at the information center in Exmouth there. It opens up at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We got there about quarter past one because we wanted to make sure we got a spot because uh, there is quite a lineup for these spots. Um, but uh, anyway, between two and four, the information center booth is open. You can book for a maximum of three nights, okay? Cost $50 for us per night here. Uh, there are power sites on entry to the site itself, but they only reserve that for people with medical reasons such as CPAP machines. As to the cost of that, I'm not too sure. I think it's about 63 or $65 because the Shire had to be conscious of the local caravan parks, not to make this cheaper so that it's more competitive against those businesses, obviously. Now, this location is generally meant purely for emergencies, overflow, etc. Um, like there's a few people here with busted axles, broken caravans, broken down cars, etc. Um, 
So yeah, we just had nowhere to stay. So it was an emergency for accommodation, I guess. Um, so three night maximum, $50 a night, not too bad, pure off-grid. You need to be fully self-sufficient with toilet, power, etc., of water. Um, not too bad, there's a bit of grass around, as you can see. Excuse the wind, it's pretty windy today. Um, we got a nice little tree site. Not doing too well for the solar at the moment. And I'll just show you, there are toilet and shower amenities. Um, we haven't bothered to set the awning up because we're only here for three nights, so no point really. We're sort of just using this as a base to propel ourselves over to Cape Range. But I don't know if you can see over in the distance there between the caravans, there's like these mobile toilets and showers. There's two lots of cubicles, one on this side and one on the other side as well. Hot tip, if you do come here, the portable toilet showers on this side are a bit older. The one on the other side, which is closer to the entrance of the park, far, far better and newer. So you can see there's a fair few people here. Exmouth Town is just literally within walking distance of a couple hundred metres. Um, we went to Pot Shots for dinner last night. Uh, amazing food. Um, stone Grill. I had the uh, steak with surf and turf. Amazing. Um, Demi had a pasta, which was awesome. Really good value. I think we paid $44 for a main, which for a stone grill is not too bad. And it's literally walking distance just through there. Everything's really close and convenient. The Exmouth footy oval's just here as well. So there's plenty to see and do. Lots of families here, lots of kids here. Uh, there's still plenty for, for the kids to go around and play on the grass and run the dogs freely as well. So just thought we'll share that with you. Because um, if you ever headed up this way and you can't get anywhere, and maybe you only need one to three nights, this is a great destination. Put on your to-do list. We'll drop some more information and a link to the info down below now. Anyway, we've got to get pressing on because from the ocean, we're going to take you inland to do a hike of Mandu Mandu today. So we're going to share with you that hike itself, uh, the gorge and what we experienced during that hike. So on this episode, you're getting the best of both worlds, guys and girls. You, you're seeing the beautiful Ningaloo Reef ocean side through to inland into the ranges of Mandu Mandu now. So uh, good day for it, a little bit windy. And then afterwards, depending on time, hopefully if we've got time, we'll go for a dip either at North Mandu or South Mandu and share that with you for a little bit more snorkeling. Let's get going together. Yo. All right, so as the signs suggest, we've started the Mandu Mandu Gorge Walk. It's a sunny day. We got uh, mid twenties, bit bit windy northeasterly, but that brings heat, obviously. So um, this walk they say allow for up to two hours. It's probably a moderate walk, a uh, grade three as such. Uh, allow yeah up to two hours. We'll, we'll time it. It's now 25 to 12. We're sort of doing a midday walk with the aim of having a bit of a swim a bit later on this afternoon to cool off. Um, now I stand corrected. I said before when we went to Pot Shot, mm -hmm. I always get it wrong, Pot Shot, Demi had pasta, but she didn't. She had the butter chicken and absolutely loved it. And I had some, and I'll be honest with you, it was amazing. And Mel had the stone grill steak as well. Um, no sauce or seasoning on top, like I had the surf and turf, but it was amazing. But anyway, Get down there if you need a feed, good value for money for a family to eat out. And how often is it that you get a place that does stone grill where you can cook it yourself in front of you? So, um, we've brought the drone, so hopefully, at some point, we'll send that up and uh, let's get underway and enjoy this walk of Mandu Mandu Gorge. Ew. Girls are all kitted out, got the boots on. These boots were made for walking. Anyway, I'll just stick to the vlogging and not so much the singing. Enjoy Mandu Mandu Gorge. Let's go. Here we go. So we've just walked into this beautiful pebble rock creek bed. Have a look at it, the white pebbles that meet sort of a little gorge area here. And the white meets the red of the gorge. You got these markers as well, so it's pretty easy to keep on track, not too difficult. All right, so the gorge has just got a little bit deeper and higher. I'll show you this rock formation here because it's changed colors, it's a lot deeper. Again, sorry about the wind, we're walking pretty much head on into it. So um, I don't know if you can see behind me, I'll try not to turn the camera too much, but again, this dark greenery, a little of the darkness of the rock formation here. 
must be a lot drier back there than the moisture that's in the rock here as we get deeper in the gorge. Have a look at this. I'm going to flip the camera around. Excuse the wind. Almost went ass up. Anything for you guys. Check that out, how it just curves around. Stunning. Just imagine it like in the wet season flowing with water through here. Any water. Be unreal. First person view. Oh yeah. All right, so we've finished in that little gorge and like all flat things must come to an end, the incline begins. Low range, engage. Here we go, up, up and away. We're going up to there. Where you can see there's people up there, but yet we gotta get through here first. So low range and climbing, here we go. Woo, it's warm. It's a fair incline, it's not too long though. It definitely makes you suck in the big ones. Oh, look at that view out there. That's the gorge we just walked all through that creek bed here. There. There's an ingaloo out there. North and South Mandu, just down that way. We'll go for a swim a bit later to freshen up. All right. So, uh, just when you get to the peak of one summit. Another one ahead of you. We're gonna go up there, and then at that post it kicks again even higher. So, uh, whew, let's do it. First person shooter mode. Do -do -do, do -do -do, do -do 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 -do. For all you gamers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, gonna focus because we've got a bit of loose stuff underfoot here with a climb. So, uh, We'll see you guys up the top yet again. So we're going higher and higher again. And uh, from up there, from what I see in the view, looks unreal. And if I can, I might even send the bird up, Jensen Airlines. It is very windy though, very windy. Um, see if we can get a 360 degree panoramic view up there. Anyway, we'll see you guys up the top. All right, so there's no way we are sending up the drone because the wind is howling about 30 knots that way. I could get it up, I probably won't be able to get it back. But anyway, um, as you can see, there's the world famous Mingaloo Reef behind us. You can see the light colors uh, before the reef on the inner reef. And then obviously the darker blue is obviously the outer reef. Over there you can see, I believe that's Oyster Stacks. And I believe it's called Oyster Stacks for obvious reasons. The reef is lined like Oyster Stacks. Similar to those of you that are watching back home in South Australia, to Coffin Bay. You can see those lines. I don't know if you make out the camera, but we definitely can see the lines like oyster stacks. So, what an unreal spot. I'm gonna jump up here, which is at the peak, and I'm gonna do a 360 for you because I can't put the drone up. You're gonna go into the wind. So again, apologies for any wind noise. But here we go, 360 tour of Mandu Mandu Gorge at the peak, the summit. Yoo! From the ocean to the land. More up here. How good. How good. How you feeling, Mama? Good. Smashed it out. A bit hairy. Chips. How you feeling, Miss? I feel better. I think the thing that kept me going was the cold wind just refreshing me every now and again. You did a great job. I feel Better. And you're carrying water there, aren't you? Two litres. Yeah, we've got four litres of water on board, always. Don't know if you can see, but there's two little rock wallabies. There they are, just moving. I'll just go a little bit closer. We're right near the edge, so I've just got to be careful. Just, so I'll point out like right there. There's that creek bed we walked through, all through here, and through there. 
they can see us, they're looking right at us. There you go, one's itching now. Yeah. Hello guys, aren't you super cute? You are gorgeous. So we're just on the tail end of the uh, trail. We're almost back at the car park. Yeah, I reckon it's just over an hour uh, taking us to get back. But um, there's this cool little drop down section you got to come down. It's always hard to capture drop offs and inclines on camera, but we've sort of had to come down and slide through that little section. But you can see the drop off here. It's pretty sheer. And the girls are going down there now. And we've got to head back down there, back up again, and then over that little ridge to the car park. But yeah, this was a cool little interesting section. Mandy, Mandy, she ain't done yet. A little bit of a drop off there. And we do have another little incline. I like this cool little valley through here. But. That's where we gotta get up. Not too bad. Oi. Oh, the old footy hip flexor. Feeling the ping. Gonna need new ball joints one day, I reckon. As the old man Foss would say, a couple of new ball joints in the uh, in the old hips with a nipple, just so we can grease them up before we do stuff like this, eh? What do you reckon, Foss? Ah, <laughs> oh, I miss the old man. Looking forward to catching up soon. Yalatar fishing. Bring it on. All right, that's a wrap of Mandu Mandu Gorge, folks. So, um, no water to jump in, but beautiful gorge. Not a too strenuous walk and epic, epic views out to Ningaloo Reef. Anyway, we're going to go down to South Mandu, jump in the water, freshen up, chuck the snorkels on. Got some new gear I'm going to share with you guys and girls. And a little snorkel diving tip that I found out last night for those that may not be experienced in diving. Just a bit of knowledge that I found, learned from my mistakes. Anyway, oh shit, there's a blooper, nearly went ass up. <laughs> Hopefully it made you smile back at home. Um, yeah, so kick back and uh, we'll head down to South Mandu and we'll share that with you real shortly. Let's get down to the water. All right, slight change of plans. Um, we went to South Mandu Mandu, but that northerly is just chopping it up too much there. So we've come back to Osprey Bay because there's a bit of a point that sort of shelters that northerly a little bit, but it is what it is. We're going to get in the water. But as I mentioned, I just wanted to share with you a bit of a learning and finding myself over the last 24 hours. So. If you may have seen in previous episodes, Mel bought some ninja shark masks and fins before we left and we used them on this trip and look, whilst I rate them, um, they're a good quality product. Since I've grown my man beard, the mask just doesn't seem to seal as good as what it used to when I was baby faced and clean shaven as such. So um, I thought bugger it after persevering after the last couple of dives, water still getting in, particularly around the bottom here. Um, doesn't matter what I did, put Vaseline on, it just didn't seem to seal it well enough. I went out and sort of uh, bit the bullet and bought a good pair of goggles and a snorkel. So I've gone back to the traditional, I guess, setup you could call it. Let me just open this box. So I bought a good quality pair of uh, Apollo's SV1s, um, quite a large mask, and I've got the Cressy uh, rear headband as well. I was just explaining about the snorkel and mask setup while you girls were getting changed. The girls were just getting ready in the toilets there, out of their hiking gear into their swimming gear. So, um, <clears throat> but what I learned yesterday is to avoid these fogging up, there's an old little hack or trick I found on YouTube. Um, so when you get them brand new, before you go diving with them, what the manufacturers generally do is they spray a bit of a seal on the inside of the lens. So it just gives it that good look, I guess, and a bit of a wow factor when it's sitting there in the retail store. Um, just gives it that shimmer and shine. So what you should do, you gotta get rid of that film before you jump in the water to stop or prevent as much fogging as possible. So the old tip is pretty easy, it's three steps. Get a sponge from your um, kitchen, um, preferably, doesn't have to be a brand new one, one that's a little bit warm, but not a scarer, a sponge. Put some soap in it, soapy water, rinse and soap up your lens with as much soap as possible, lather it up, and sort of scrub it in circular motion. Not too hard, but just circular motion. Once you've done that, rinse it underwater, give it a good and you'll see where you've missed areas of the glass that still fog up. So then what you do is grab the old toothpaste. Now, 
the pastier the toothpaste the better so the gel one's probably not as good get a good pasty one and just simply drop um, put a couple of blobs of toothpaste in either side and just massage around with the index finger all the way around for a minute or two same as the sponge minute or two round and round in circles like mr. Miyagi said wax on wax off once you've done that rinse out the toothpaste give it a again and there should only maybe be a few tiny little sections that are still fogging up if that's the case the last thing you can do is get one of those a lighter maybe or something that's just got a small pilot light flame ideally like a barbecue long extender lighter and just sort of quickly give it a bit of a flash burn over those last spots that still fog up um, when i did those three steps afterwards when i went <sighs> there was no fog so i'm looking forward to seeing some crystal clear footage we're going to get into our swimming and snorkeling gear i'm going to head into osprey bay again and just share a bit more diving with you and uh hopefully that diving tip helps you maybe those that are you know already well known for diving let me know in the comments below if that's something that you do with every set of new goggles but we've done it for my set and we've done it for the girl set as well so um what we do like and we'll continue to use is the ninja shark bags waterproof bags are really cool um we didn't upgrade the fins because obviously we would love to get bigger fins wouldn't we love yeah. but the big diving fins there's only so much you can store in the caravan so the fins for the ninja sharks still fit into these bags quite well so we've opted to keep those and we just upgraded our goggles good quality masks and good quality snorkels because at the end of the day if you buy good quality equipment it just makes the experience all that much better um, but still we rate the ninja sharks they've been great but we're probably just taking things to that next level now as we get more experience with diving and snorkeling yeah, mm, yeah. all right enough of that let's jump into the water and have some fun all right so we've just come a little bit further north of osprey this time yesterday we snorkeled more down that way but with the outgoing tide pushing the current this way we're going to cover this ground here and let the current naturally take us back to that way was over there so new ground new adventure let's see what we find out there anyway let's jump in there enjoy the dive
Well, as the saying goes, all amazing things must come to an end. And that brings us close to another EP episode. Thanks for joining us, legends. How do you feel? Love it. No, it was great. Unreal. Um, yeah, there's something really special about the Ningaloo Reef, the marine life, the turtle. Uh, everything's just been unbelievable. We'll 100% be back because, yeah, it's just a spot that you need to come back to. It's if, so nice here. If this isn't on your to-do list, like, and you're an Australian or live in Australia, I'd do this before you do anything overseas. Like, this is on your back door. Um, yeah, it's just been an incredible experience to, uh, you know, snorkel the Ningaloo, but also to do the Rangers, Cape Range Inland as well on the hike that we yeah. did. But it offers everything, like the whale shark experience. There's peaks of whales out here at the moment as well. Yeah. People are saying more than they've ever seen before too, so. Yeah, yep. Um, so, um, we hope you've been- The as well, like that was cool. Yeah. yeah. But uh, unfortunately that brings us to the end of our Exmouth stay pretty much. So tomorrow, and our next episode, we are headed to a place called Fortescue River. Mm -hmm. We're staying there for a night, just for a one-nighter overnight. And then we make our way on to Paru. Yeah. Paru, I think that's how you pronounce I think it's it. Kozak after this. Oh no, yeah, right. Point Samson. Yeah. Uh, a little spot called Kozaks. And then eventually we make our way up towards Broomish Way. Yeah. And the station we're staying at is Barn Hill. We're going to Barn Hill, and we'll share that with you and Paru as well. A lot of cool stuff coming up over the next. Pretty much the next three to four weeks, we've got booked out right from Exmouth as we make our way up to Broome, and then eventually up to Middle Lagoon, up towards Cape Levique, uh, north of Broome as well. So plenty of cool stuff to come, guys and girls. So if you haven't, as always, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, smash it, smash the like, smash, 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 smash. That way you get all notifications of the wonderful stuff. We're absolutely loving and sharing with you guys and girls, and we hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. And uh, yeah, trying to take you on this journey with us if you're from home. Mm -hmm. Those watching from Adelaide where it's winter and highs of about 13, 14. And here we are in singlets, swimming in the Ningaloo Reef where the water temp's about 25 degrees. Yeah, 24 so degrees. warm. It's like a bar. Uh, it's colder out than in. <laughs> Put it absolutely. that way. Anyway, legends, thanks for joining us on another episode. And until next week, live free. See you next week. Ciao. Yo.